So Bella's joined me outside because she's very frightened. We've got one chicken she's not really keen on and um, it's uh, coming after her a little bit because uh, even though the chicks are growing up, uh, she's still being very protective, that little mummy. So Bella, you can lie down. No? Very needy. Okay, I think you need to go down. Right, so I'm now outside with Karen. Hello, Karen. Good morning. Good morning, Philippa. <laughs> Very nice of you to come. And I'm using Ophelia's um, seat frame, <laughs> Ophelia naming on everything. And um, I'm just sitting here with it at a 45 degree angle under my thigh. And I'm sitting like I'm sitting on a horse. Now I'm wearing Richard's gilet, he's, he's, he, I keep stealing things like this, thinking it was going to be winter and cold, because it isn't. It's lovely and warm, I should have worn my sunglasses really. So I've put saran wrap that my friend Harriet Roberts from Memphis brought for me. Um, I think it must have been about five years ago, but I'm still using the roll because I will reuse this. And I'm just going to put a letterbox shape um, hole in this, just a space like this, just by stroking my very sharp embroidery scissors. These are my absolutely favorite embroidery scissors. Although I know everybody has their favorites. These with the little curved end, just lovely. And I'm just stroking it. So this doesn't spoil your scissors. And then really strong stuff around that. And then just ripping that off. Or you could of course use kitchen scissors and do the same. So that's fairly carefully done so that I can use that again and again and again and it grieves me I'm using a new piece because actually I've used the same piece for all three all two stockings and another piece of embroidery I'm doing at the moment so I've now got another thing to show off which is absolutely gorgeous which um, Dorothy Koo from Australia oh she's a legend she made this as a gift and so often on retreats people arrive and they give you something and it's not really till months afterwards that you actually get around to using it properly and appreciating uh, what that amazing kindness was. And Karen just noticed that this is kangaroos in little snowy hats, so perfect for a Christmas project. And um, I've seen these, this pattern once or twice on, on uh, Facebook uh, with the plastic front. And she's just a genius making this. I can't do anything like that. That's not my skill, but it will be one day. So if this lockdown goes on any longer, I think we're all gonna learn these skills. So I've now got to choose what I'm going to do. So with the top and obviously, you know, Ophelia aged nearly six, but I'm going to have that for my name. And I'm just going to veto that because that pink phase really goes at about six or seven. And I want her to use this all of her life. So I could actually go for the um, purple, which is really, really easy to stitch with. It's a satinized, uh, it's an anchor thread actually. I'm not quite sure which one that is but uh, I'm sure you'll recognize it if you have it in your stash. Um, or I could go for the variegated uh, cotton or this one, which is a metallic thread, but it's quite an easy sewer, but I'm not very keen on splitting threads and then taking them. I might just add little features in a difficult thread. So if your thread is too thick or difficult, you could actually just take it and couch over the top of it. So you actually just lay it down and couch and then you could make it into joined up writing if you want to, just an idea. And then, um, and then the same with this metallic Madeira. I do like this thread, actually. This has been a real favorite during this because um, it just stitches beautifully. And I have a selection of needles, or do I not? I hope I have a selection of needles. Karen, I've forgotten them. I have to come back in a minute. I've got my needles in the other design, which I've left inside. So we're back again. Um, I went in, I've left all the needles here for Sienna's stocking. So I actually put them through, um, I know that you, a lot of people use a magnet uh, needle, work, needle holder, but I'm moving this in and out of the frame a lot. So I'm actually just sticking it through the corner. Never put it obviously up here because it can get embedded in your breast unknowingly, which is pretty frightening. So you must fit the size of the needle to the thread so if the thread treads at all just try a needle with a larger um, eye or a different needle that's a better quality because it's a real thing about cheap needles they're not polished in the inside of the eye so you need to have one like that and if a needle doesn't work for you please just bin it they're really not that expensive and um, you need to uh, Use the tools that you can use effectively and easily. If it's not easy, it's not right. So I'm just looking at this thread and if I'm using this one, then 
that's going to need a much fatter, bigger needle because I want the needle to make the hole going through the linen. So keep your action going straight down at 90 degrees like an Olympic um, diver, straight down and straight out the base and the same as you come in. No scooping, so you're not scooping in and out. Obviously you could actually stitch this in, in your hand, but um, I don't want any gathering at all. And if I'm sitting watching something really thrilling, I'm inclined to get my attention wrong by hand. So the stitch I would use here would be the cool outline stitch, which is exactly the same and we showed earlier on here. But as you go around the corners, just make a slightly smaller stitch. So this uh, piece of thread that I'm using, the purple, um, it's really in a bit of a mess and I can't really tell which end I'm pulling. Who nerfed that to a piece of thread? <laughs> Innocent. <laughs> so um, I need to find out which way the thread is running. Now on the Appleton's walls, nowadays, nearly always, the end you pull, which is the inside of the skein, which I'll show you the skein, which is that, the inside, which, you know, rather than like having a ball of string in a tin, that'll come out smoothly. You don't pull the outside because it just crumples everything. That will pull smoothly out. And the end you pull out is the end you knot. So the end nearer the skein is the end you thread. And if you do that, you'll find that your wool runs beautifully. So that's your needle end, that's your tail end, and the, the wool will go down. It's rather like having a nap in velvet. So a lot of people, when they try and find out the nap of a thread, they'll just rub it up and down like that, which ends up looking, you know, like a feather duster and it's too fluffy. So you need to beware not to overhandle your thread. I hardly handle mine at all. I just hold the last inch or two like that and use your second finger and your thumb on the non-dominant hand. I'm right-handed, so I'm using my left hand because it's covered in ink, even so. Um, and I just stroke it. Don't squeeze, just very gently stroke it one way and then the other way. Was that obvious, Karen? Can you see that? Up there and down there. And if you say to me, I can't tell the difference, that's fine. Your thread will run smoothly. I'm not going to make a fuss about it but we're using lots of different threads and metallic threads and wools and everything. So you just need to be, um, just need to look at it. And when you get more experience, you'll be able to see the way it twists, because this is a two ply and you'll be able to see the S twist or the Z twist going down. So, okay, right. So I'm now going to thread it. Now, if this was um, wool, you just fold it over, squeeze hard with your finger and thumb and then push your needle down over the top. And in a way, that's a test to see if the eye of the needle is big enough. If you're actually wetting it, flattening it, squeezing it, using a thread, you know, a threader, unless, unless you're finding it physically difficult to do the way I'm doing it, honestly, I think, I think you're trying to squeeze too big a thread into a tiny um, eye of a needle sometimes. So I'm going to be rather lazy with this and I've put a huge knot, so I've actually, um, I've actually turned this over two or three times to make the knot at the end um, because I really I really want this to be anchored because I can see that you know we could have a sisterly row and one sister pulling it out and you know what they like so right I'm going to start just at the base here let's make sure that my saran wrap is out of the way and I'm actually going to um, the overlap here it's a bit like when you make a pillow or a cushion when you put the cord around the edge sometimes it's quite difficult to just get that finish really beautiful so i'm going to make sure that i'm doing it in a bit where i might put a little snowflake or a flower so i personally would sit that possibly at the bottom or you could have it at the top right a little bit you know like the flower in your hair so a little bit of decoration so i'm just taking a stitch and then using my second finger on my upper hand to just keep that loop out of the way and this thread is um, longer than I would ever have it for wool because this is a very very smooth thread so it's down on the line and if your line is fairly thick just <clears throat> put your thread down just to the outside rather than don't go inside your pencil line now some of you might have used a marker pen I would never do that because that can just uh, gradually, with, even with humidity, that can show a line outside. 
and conservators um, who will see this in piece in 300 years time and go it's just amazing what they could do in that lockdown period um, they would they would say you should really never use one of the commercial alcohol based pens well Bella and I are going to carry on stitching and hiding from hens and um, just in case they come over we've got some we've got some ammunition to throw at them and keep them out of the way and have some peace because they've learned how to jump on my knee and I really don't want that to go on well one of them very pushy one anyway so we'll come back later when this is completely finished so I'm just finishing off the uh, name and you know children make special requests we had to have this thread and this particular child will definitely remember this. So I'm actually writing Granny Loves along here, just in slightly smaller, obviously much smaller scale. Um, and this cuff on the top of the stocking, this will just turn in. So, you know, future boyfriends, husbands, sisters won't see it. It'll just be, um, it'll just be a secret that Granny loves and then she can read Ophelia. So, so that'll be tucked in. So I'll be ready to, um, cut around the outside and put the backing on next time.